I am back. In a recent video, I showed you how to do ribbon work with rolled fondant and chocolate dough. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make that chocolate dough. Chocolate dough is my favorite modeling medium for making things that stand up off of cookies or cakes, like bow loops. And it's my favorite because of its taste. When made with a high-grade chocolate, it's absolutely yummy. It is a little bit more heat sensitive than rolled fondant, so there are some circumstances under which I can't use it. But when I can, I always will. So I'm going to show you how I, how I made the dough that made these ribbons. I love chocolate dough also, not only for the flavor, but because it's also super easy to make. It's largely a one bowl process if you use your scale. And it takes two minutes, one to two minutes max, to mix up once you've melted the chocolate. So my basic formulation is about seven ounces of melted chocolate. I do this in a double boiler. But it's a makeshift double boiler. I just use a bowl that I know is going to be big enough to receive the corn syrup that I'm going to add to this because it's two ingredients, chocolate and corn syrup. And I set it ideally so it's not touching the water underneath and melt it gently. If you overheat chocolate, it can seize and thicken. Beginners who have not a lot of experience with chocolate sometimes think when it seizes and thickens that they just need to heat it more. And in fact, that makes the situation worse. It makes it even more granular. But this is perfectly melted. I'm going to take it off the double boiler and I'm just wiping the bottom so water doesn't drip anywhere. I'm going to set the water aside. We don't need that and we don't want that in the chocolate. And what I am going to do at this point is, as I said, there were seven ounces of chocolate in here, but I want to weigh my bowl with the chocolate in it because I'm going to be adding corn syrup to it. And I, I tend to like to weigh everything for this recipe because then I can keep it all in one bowl. I don't have to put the corn syrup into a measuring cup and then try to scoop it out. There's usually a lot of loss in that process. Plus it makes a really messy, it's a messy proposition and it's one more item to clean up. So investing in a scale is great. Also, not just for this recipe, but if you're baking in general, you'll get much more precise results off of that. So I hadn't weighed my bowl before. I had seven ounces of chocolate. My bowl must weigh about 7.8 ounces because I'm registering 14.8 ounces on my scale. To this chocolate, I add either a third a cup of corn syrup or about 3.5 ounces. So I need to take this to about 18.5 to get it where I want it. One note, this is a semi-sweet chocolate, about 60% cacao ratio. Um, so depending on the type of chocolate you use, you want to adjust the, cons the amount of corn syrup you use. We'll be doing a white chocolate variation of this dough as soon as I finish this. And because it's got a higher cocoa butter content, I need to use less corn syrup to bring the dough to the ultimate uh, similar kind of molding consistency. If I put in the same amount, my white chocolate dough would be really, really soft even after it had set up for a period of time. Okay, so I'm looking to take this up three and a half ounces then stop adding corn syrup. Okay, so I'm just about there. And what I'm going to do at this stage is just stir it together. And it, the mixture starts out really fluid, but as I stir it, usually no longer than one to two minutes, this addition of the corn syrup causes the chocolate to thicken and become very paste-like to the point that it actually ultimately clears the sides of the bowl. If the chocolate's really warm to start, it'll take a little bit longer for this to come together neatly and nicely. But you'll see as I'm stirring how it's thickening and getting a little pasty. Don't expect this to be of molding consistency right away. It's going to be very, very gloppy to start, but this is close to what I would expect to see at this stage. I'm just going to stir it a touch more until it just turns shiny and cleans the side of the bowl, like so. And then that's all you need to do to make the chocolate dough. Um, except that you want to transfer it out of the bowl and store it so that it can sit um, for a period of time to firm up. Now to do that, I like to store it in an airtight container wrapped in plastic. Just because I flatten it into a disc and then it's easier to start rolling the dough or shaping it typically from a disc. It also tends to um, solidify more uniformly if it's padded into a shallow disc as opposed to massed up in a big ball. At this point, it's, so, it's still relatively fluid that it's not going to hold a ball shape anyway. So I'm just simply scraping it out of the bowl and onto the plastic wrap. The one thing to watch out for is 
you don't want to have too many folds in the plastic wrap because when the chocolate sets up, it'll set up around the plastic and sometimes it's hard to get the plastic out. So that's done. I flatten it into a disc, wrap the plastic around it like so. I might do another layer of plastic around this, mostly just to give this a little more stability so it's easier to move around while it's still soft. And I wrap this, at this point, my chocolate had cooled down before I started. It was, it was lukewarm. Little, this is a little bit warm to the touch. But it's, it's, it's certainly um, cool enough to wrap up. If I would let it sit in that bowl for a couple of minutes before I packaged it, it would be even easier to handle than it is now. It's flopping around a little bit. So with that done, you can't use it immediately. So if you're planning to use modeling chocolate, you do need to do this in advance. Typically, if it's a really cool day, cool environment, maybe 65 degrees in your work environment, and if you put this into a sealed container and let it sit overnight, it will set up to a much more solid working consistency, something that can be molded and shaped. This is dough I actually made about a week ago, but even after a day, if, you're on, if it's not too hot, it will set up to this kind of consistency, believe it or not. So that's the basics of making a, cho a dark chocolate dough, a semi-sweet chocolate dough. There is a nuance, as I said, to making the white chocolate dough. So I'm going to break now. I'm going to melt that chocolate, and we're going to come back and put that together. And I'll show you what I, what I do differently when we get to that point. I'll be back in a sec. Hi, I'm back. I've got the white chocolate melted. Again, starting with seven ounces to make it easy. I'm starting with seven ounces of melted white chocolate. But, as I mentioned before, because of the added cocoa butter content, or the relatively high proportion of cocoa butter content in white chocolate versus dark chocolate, I have to add less corn syrup to get to the same end working consistency. Just as an example, here's some finished white chocolate dough. It's bendable and pliable. It's fairly rigid if I'm just holding it in my hand. This is not going to start out that way. It's going to be kind of soupy and pasty, but after a day or two days sitting in an airtight container wrapped in plastic, it will solidify into this working consistency. So as I said, I'm going to add less corn syrup. In this case, it's about a quarter of a cup, but I've got my melted chocolate sitting on a scale, so I'm just going to weigh it in. That quarter of a cup is about 2.4 ounces of corn syrup. So I'm going to be watching the scale. A couple more big squeezes. Ought to do it. There we go. Okay, same process. I'm going to stir it. I'm going to take it off the scale to do that though because it's a little bit easier. And my chocolate is cool. It's kind of lukewarm. It's not steaming hot. Now as I stir it, it's going to come together, but it's going to, it's, this is a more sensitive product than the dark chocolate dough. And as I stir it, it tends typically, especially if the chocolate is at all warm, to exude more cocoa butter. And that cocoa butter, if it's left sitting on the dough, it'll ooze out and be kind of a yellow, melt. it'll look like melted butter surrounding the dough. I've stirred it enough. I'm actually not seeing too much. But you'll notice that the dough isn't as slick and homogeneous as the dark chocolate dough. I don't know if you noticed that. There are like little holes in it. Um, so what I like to do is bring it together by kneading it a little bit. And this also works out the excess cocoa butter, I find. As I'm kneading, you'll see this cocoa butter coming out. Um, I find that if I don't do this and I were just to package that up the way I packaged up the dark chocolate dough, um, it would settle and some of the cocoa butter would ooze out if it didn't ooze out already. And it would settle into pockets on the interior of the dough once that set up. That cocoa butter, it recrystallizes and it recrystallizes into something that's very, very hard that, and then ultimately makes the dough very gritty. So by working out the cocoa butter this way, I get a lot of it out to begin with. The dough is now looking much more plastic-like. It's not as, there's not as many holes in it. And that will end up, that will end up giving me a, a just much smoother end product. And I'd say I probably released about one to two teaspoons of cocoa butter in that kneading process. If I sit this down on the counter here and, and package it up immediately, you'll see there's still a lot of cocoa butter sitting around the outside, and that too will recrystallize when I package it up. So I want to blot this dry before I do package it because I want to, again, avoid any kind of recrystallization either on the interior or on the surface. 
And to blot it dry, I simply use a paper towel. I blot it quickly. I don't let it sit on the surface too long because it'll stick and then you have to, you'll struggle to get that paper towel out of the dough. And I'll flip it over, clean up my work surface and get the extra cocoa butter off. Sometimes give myself a new set of towels if those are pretty soft and pat the back side as dry as I can possibly get it. Sometimes as it sits, it exudes more cocoa butter. So I may do this uh, two or three times before I actually package it up, flipping it over repeatedly. But I think it's looking pretty dry, so I'm going to move it on over to the side. Again, clean up my work surface. Maybe give it one more pat on the top. And you'll notice it's pretty solidified. I started with a, a much cooler white chocolate than I did dark chocolate, so my dark chocolate was floppier at this stage because my chocolate was cooler to start. It's almost, it's almost manageable, but still too floppy to shape ribbons and roses and such with. So again, I'm patting it some more, and that's beginning to look pretty darn good. It's never gonna be completely dry at this stage, but if you get off all the big obvious pools of cocoa butter, you'll be in good shape. And again, I like to flatten it into a disc, and I set it on plastic, Again, it's important to get any wrinkles out of the plastic or they'll set into the chocolate. I'm going to pat it dry one last time. You'll see I'm trying to get most of the glisten off the top, and that looks pretty darn good. Simply package it up the way I did the dark chocolate dough. Maybe give it another layer of plastic so it's a little bit easier to handle and move it. And then I store it in an airtight container. If I were just to leave this out, over time wrapped in plastic, the plastic is permeable and the dough would get hard and kind of crunchy much more quickly than if I store it in a Tupperware container, for instance. So in it goes, and in about 24 hours, it'll be set up to something that's more like this consistency. And in the case of the dark chocolate dough, um, it sets up even firmer typically to something more like this consistency. Simply put the lid on top. I like to always date my container so I know when the batch was made. This will stay fresh for a very, very long time and workable for a very, very long time. But if you let it go months, for instance, it can get really hard and unworkable and then it's not really salvageable and you want to move on to a new set of chocolate dough. Hey, I'm back. It's a day later. I told you that the chocolate dough that I made yesterday would set up to a firm working consistency, ready to make ribbons and roses. I don't know if you believe me or not, but I just wanted to show you that in fact, what I said was true. Here's the chocolate dough, very, very rigid now. This is the dark chocolate dough made with semi-sweet chocolate. And just to verify, I can break off a nice solid chunk, roll it into a ball, and do all sorts of other things with it. Same is true of the white chocolate dough I made. Here it, here it is again, not so floppy anymore. This is just, this is actually not even overnight. It was about 12 hours stored at room temperature, maybe 65 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe a little bit warmer in an airtight container wrapped in plastic for that period of time. The white chocolate dough will always be a little bit softer than the semi-sweet chocolate dough. Don't let that alarm you. And it will also melt more quickly in the heat of your hands, and that's because of the higher cocoa butter content. So with this dough, you have to be a little bit more careful in terms of how much you handle it. You might need to let it sit a little bit longer to set up than the dark chocolate dough too. But as you can see, this one is forming nice round balls that hold their shape even 12 hours later. Um, please join me in my next video where I'll be talking about how to shape this dough into ribbons and all sorts of other edible treats that are perfect for cookie and cake decorating. Live sweetly!